Hey, everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to share two stories that I think are very, very serious, and we need to talk about them right now, and that is about the uh, food shortage that's coming. And it's not just supply chains and government decisions and things like that and inflation we're dealing with. We're now dealing with serious weather, and uh, I want to do this. We're going to start over here real quick at this story. This is our Reuters. I'm going to link both of them in the description below, and then we're going to chat about it. Uh, U.S. corn planting, the slowest since 2013, yield risks still premature. And it's saying here out of Naperville, Illinois, on April 25th, U.S. corn planting is moving at its slowest pace in nine years. Poor timing for threats to the world's largest corn crop as prices remain near record levels. So guys, not only do we have a lot of things going on in Ukraine, we've seen uh, buildings, produce, and food companies uh, you know, buildings, commercial buildings being burnt to the ground, literally all over the country. Now we have weather to deal with. And so I think this is very serious, very timely that people need to get prepared now. There's no, there's no time than now because with the inflation, you know, it's one thing to deal with the supply chain and go, oh, I got a couple of weeks. But honestly, with inflation, prices just keep going up. So why not run down to the store and just get yourself a little extra, a little something normal, right? It says here, slower than normal planting has proceeded uh, strong, U.S. corn yields in some recent years. But farmers need to avoid falling too far behind over the next three weeks because crops have been far from excellent when planting delays were serious. It said the U.S. Department of Agriculture Statistics Service on Monday pegged 7% of the corn crop planted as of Sunday were below trade expectations for 9%. The five-year average is 15 to 16% that was planted on the same date last year. Now, let's jump back to this story here where this is um, out of week.com. It says corn soybean planting in Illinois is delayed by cold temperatures and rain. It says Illinois, I always say Illinois just so you know, so you can have fun in the comment section. I always have read it Illinois. <laughs> That's so funny. Whatever, I can't stop. Uh, Illinois producers are struggling to get corn and soybeans planted this spring. The latest crop report from the U.S. Department of Ag shows there was one and a half suitable days for field work last week due to rain and colder temperatures. Only 2% of the state's corn has been planted so far this season. That's compared with a five-year average of 21%. Literally one-tenth of the normal planting the last five-year average has happened as of right now, 1% uh, of the soybeans in Illinois were planted last week, while 16% of the crop was in the ground at this point last year. And, and if you've, you've been a, a farmer, a grower, uh, you know, even planting a home garden, you know you have to hit it just right. You don't have a lot of time, um, you know, too early and it's too cold and the frost knocks out your crop too late and the plant is not fully matured and ready to produce in the, lot, the right time of the season. So it's very, very vital that we get this going, but the problem is the extreme weather has been pushing this off. It says here, although this isn't a unique to Illinois, uh, inclement weather has changed most of the Corn Belt and only 4% of the country's corn was planted by April 17th. This is only gonna exacerbate the issue, guys. I mean, in a day where, what was it? You just saw President Biden say, oh yeah, you can just add more ethanol to the fuel to get you guys by, sweet that's made with corn, that's not good. And so many foods, prepackaged foods are made with corn. It is absolutely vital to our food supply. And the truth is we're talking about the world's largest growing area of corn. This is very serious. It's time to get ready. It says, as we get into May, then people will start to get more and more worried. In the middle of May, there starts to be a significant yield drag on corn and soybeans in Illinois. And by late May, the yield impact is significant and significant in a bad way. So let me just stop there real quick. When they're talking about getting into the middle of May, there are some very wet uh, days planned for the first week of May. I believe May 3rd through 5th, we are going to see a lot of rain hitting Illinois. And so that is going to make this problem even worse if that rain comes through because the farmers can't get out and, and plant. It's just too wet, too muddy. Uh, the, the conditions are not right. It says you never get to perfect, but maybe you can get to really good or very good. But sometimes, as you see, the calendar days fall off. It's time to get going, and people will be wrestling with those difficult choices. The facts are, guys, 
we are in a very serious situation. And I've been warning about these food shortages that I believe are going to be all over the news in August and September, which I believe is going to cause widespread riots and some other very serious things in our economy by the fall. I can't be more serious about this. It is time to get yourself, if not emergency food, I think the easiest thing is just canned foods or a bag of rice. And, and you know what's crazy? You know, it's so it's so easy to take some rice and doctor it up with, with seasonings or soy sauce and things like that. And you could get by a long way on a bag of rice. And I know that's usually the staple, you know, rice and beans is what what people go to. I know people that have taken these five gallon buckets, these food grade buckets, and they filled them and stored them. And, and, you know, there's ways of keeping them dry and preserved. I highly suggest you look at that because if you think about it, a five gallon, you know, bucket of rice, that's preserved properly. So it doesn't mold, mildew, any of that stuff with the, the right seasonings in during a time of need, you will be thanking your lucky stars. You will be praising the Lord that you've got that to get you through these hard times. And the reason why it's so important for you to get ready for these things now is because I, I want you in a clear frame of mind as the economy is collapsing and there's all these amazing opportunities out there. I want you to take advantage of it. I want you to be blessed because I know that if you guys are following the Economic Ninja and Ninja Nation, you're a part of Ninja Nation, guys, there's, there's nothing fancy about this, right? we're going to be the ones that everybody sort of laughed at, the ones that everyone rolled their eyes at. But honestly, guys, it's not about showing off. It's about making a difference in this world and living this life to its fullest. You know, it's one thing to be successful and have money. I know what that's like. It's another thing to help people and bless other people. That gets you more excited and more on a, I guess, spiritual high, for lack of better terms, then anything, any money is going to bring you. Yes, we want to be wealthy. Yes, we want to be successful. Why not, right? I choose winning over losing. I choose um, succeeding over failure, right? But the truth is without, you know, that great feeling in your heart that you help someone else, it's just worthless. And quite frankly, we reap what we sow. And so guys, let's start right now to start prepare. And there's some people, and I've done it myself, I've went out and bought a box of just, you know, spaghetti makings and stuff, knowing that there's going to be people around me that I'll be able to help out. And, and that'll be such a blessing. So think about that. It's not just about the finances, guys. It's also about being ready so that you have a clear mind. So when the ninja comes out and goes, all right, there's lots and lots of unfinished construction over there. There's thousands of homes. Let's go buy them and finish them. Uh, I want you in the clear frame of mind to go, hey, I got food in my belly, I've got energy, and I got a smile on my face. Let's go crush it and let's go change some people's lives. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Thanks to all the older subscribers that have been with me for so long. This has been quite a year and a half journey. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.